Hi there, and welcome back to the template tutorial series. This is video number 9, Revisited. After posting the original video number 9 in October, I received a lot of fantastic feedback and a number of thought-provoking questions. I had a little bit of a rethink and decided to change a couple of things about my approach, making it both more streamlined but also more flexible. The old video is no longer relevant. In fact, it would be downright confusing to keep it alongside this newer one, so I've gone ahead and removed it. But now, without further ado, here is Lima Part 2 Revisited. In this video I will show you how I set up Lima to display different articulations specific to the selected track, and how to switch between those articulations. Let's start in Cubase. We will once again need to create a generic remote device. To do that I'll open up Device Setup. The basics of creating a generic remote device were already covered in the previous video, so I'll skip straight to the contents. For this generic remote, we need to set up outgoing MIDI messages, so we want to select a MIDI output from the drop-down menu. In my case, I am using Lemur 7 Return for returning MIDI messages for track selection. In this generic remote device, you only need to have one entry. For this entry, I am using a controller or MIDI CC message with the address value of 126, and also I have activated the transmit flag in the flags column. In the lower half of this window, I have set the device column to MIDI mixer and the next two columns both to selected. Notice that once you do, the value column will actually display the number 4000. Now what will happen is that every time I switch to a new track, Cubase will send out CC126. Lemur will receive that and send back CC127. I'm using these two CC values at the top of the range to avoid messing with any CCs that might be used by the actual instrument, such as the CC values used for modulation, expression, mic position faders, speed, vibrato, etc. I'll close device setup and I'll show you how I've set up each individual track. On each track I've activated a local MIDI input transformer. I'll open up the transformer for this track. The top half is configured to receive the incoming controller message 127. The first line is set to type is equal to controller, and the second line value is equal to 127. The bottom half transforms that CC127 into a poly pressure message with a value set to 1. Each track, with its own set of articulations, uses a unique value here in combination with a different MIDI channel, but I'll get to the channels in a second. Here I'm using polypressure as the type of message because the instrument itself uses notes and CC values, and program changes are used for articulation switching. That leaves me with pitch bend and aftertouch, both of which might also be used by an instrument. Polypressure is the least common type of message here, and that suits my purpose perfectly. Very few keyboard controllers actually have it, and none of the virtual instruments that I use have it. But instruments that do support polypressure would need a slightly different approach. Next, I've activated a MIDI send on each track, and I've set it to the same MIDI port called Lima 7 Return that I used for the generic remote. The channel I've set as channel 1, which is what I use for high woodwind instruments. The channel number in combination with the poly pressure message defines which articulations get displayed in Lima. Channel 1, poly pressure 1, results in Spitfire Symphonic Woodwind's piccolo articulations the articulations that are currently visible. I've also set up a transformer on this MIDI send that deletes all other MIDI data that isn't a polypressure message. We don't want all of the note data and CC data and everything else from this MIDI track to be sent to Lima. To achieve that I've used the following settings for this transformer. Type is unequal to polypressure and the delete function is selected. Now I'm going to switch to a different instrument to give you another example. I'll find my high strings group, and then the viola from Cinematic Studio Strings. Here is its input transformer. It's again set up to receive CC127, but on this track that gets transformed to polypressure value 28. The MIDI send uses the same Lemur 7 return port, but this time I use MIDI channel 12, which is the channel that I use for high strings. You could of course have several instruments sending out the same message, which will show you the same page of articulations in Lima. This can be useful if different tracks use the same key switch layout. Also, you can duplicate your MIDI track and the new track will have the same transformer settings again bringing up the same key switches in Lima. 
That covers the setup in Cubase, so let's switch over to Lima. First, I made some buttons on which articulation names will be displayed and which can then be pressed to select those articulations. For this I use a pad object, with 4 columns and 14 rows each. Inside this pad object I created two expressions. One of them is called Arts and it's used to temporarily store the articulation names, and the other one is called PC Out, and this one sends out program change messages that change the currently active articulation in Cubase expression maps. If you've watched video number 6 about setting up expression maps, then you've probably realized by now that this is something that I used to do differently. I used to use regular note out or key switch messages from Lima to trigger expression map slots, but I've now switched over to using program changes. This avoids needing to use variable key switch values that need to be redefined based on the instrument's own range to avoid clashes between the key switch and the instrument itself. I'll select this expression PC out and show you the details. Here in the MIDI mapping section, I've selected program change as the type of message and the target is set to MIDI 1. In addition to these two expressions, I've also created a script called set PC out. I'll open the script. I've set it to execute on expression with the value of X and the trigger condition is set to value goes from zero to positive. What this means is that the script is executed when any of the pad buttons are pressed, and x equals the number of the button pressed. The one line in the script assigns that value x to the expression PC out, and from there this message is then sent to Cubase. Next we need some scripts that listen to incoming MIDI signals from Cubase. There are two things that Lemur needs to respond to, and I've created a script for each. The generic remote that I set up earlier sends out a CC126 whenever I change to a new track in Cubase. This script that I've called MIDI Trigger is set up to receive that CC126 and send back CC127. CC127 is then received on the track that you've selected in Cubase and goes through the input transformer that I set up earlier. The transformed message is then sent back to Lima via the MIDI send and identifies the currently selected track, because each track has a unique transformer setting. But I'll get to details in a minute, first let's look at these two scripts. I'll click on the MIDI trigger script. Here under execution I've selected on MIDI. In the next drop down I've selected control change. This makes your script listen to incoming MIDI CCs. Next the MIDI port. As I mentioned earlier I use MIDI port 7 for incoming MIDI signals. Next is the CC range that the script listens to. I only need it to listen to CC126. And the last two fields define the MIDI channel range. This should correspond to the generic remote 2, which I left at channel 1. The code of the script is made up of only one line, and that sends out MIDI CC127 on channel 1. The other script deals with the second incoming MIDI message, identifying the selected track. It's set up in a similar way, except that it is listening to key pressure. That's a different name for those poly pressure messages from Cubase. On MIDI channels 1 to 16. The code of this script is where it gets a little bit complicated. First the script declares a couple of variables that it uses. The next two lines get the poly pressure and channel values of the incoming MIDI signal from MIDI args, where MIDI args 0 is the poly pressure message number and MIDI args 2 is the channel number. The next section of the script does different things depending on what the MIDI channel of the incoming signal was. As I explained earlier, I'm using different MIDI channels for different instrument groups. For example, if the MIDI channel is 1, or according to the script, less than 1, because Lima starts counting from 0, so MIDI channel 1 actually turns into a 0 in Lima code. Anyway, if the MIDI channel is 1, then the script returns an instrument name and articulation list from the high woodwinds bank. If the channel value was 2, then it'll get those from the low and ensemble woodwinds bank instead, and so on, all the way to channel 13 for low and ensemble strings. In any case, the script uses the poly pressure value, variable y, of the incoming signal to determine which instrument has been currently selected in Cubase. The name of the instrument and the articulations themselves are stored in numbered expressions, which I'll get to soon. This next line assigns the instrument name to a text field above the articulation pads. 
In the last two lines, pull names of the articulations from the articulation list and populate the labels of the pads. So that covers the two scripts listening to incoming MIDI. Next I'll show you where the actual information for each instrument is stored. If I unfold the bank folder, you can see a bunch of lower level containers in here, the names of which you already saw in the MIDI end script. And each one of them uses a different MIDI channel, also mentioned in the name. I'll open one of these containers, for example this, the High Woodwinds container. Inside you can see a list of expressions with numbered names. Here is where the polypressure message number determines which expression gets loaded. Channel 1 message 1 is the Spitfire Symphonic Woodwinds Piccolo, Channel 1 message 2 is the Berlin Woodwinds Piccolo, and so on. Next I'll take a closer look at one of these expressions. Each one of them contains a number of smaller elements. First, the name of the instrument in quotation marks, which makes it a text element, and the others are all references to global expressions. I should explain at this point that there is a 256 character limit on the length of an expression in Lima, so I can't fit the name of an instrument plus all the potential 56 different articulations inside this one expression here, without using abbreviated references to those names. To get around the character limit I'm using global expressions. Here they are, at the top level of my Lima project. I can reference the names of these global expressions in my instrument expressions. And because their own names are a lot shorter than the articulation names that they contain, it's possible to stay under the 256 character limit. Of course, if your instrument doesn't have many articulations, then you could skip this step entirely and just have the articulation names written out in full inside the instrument expression. Just remember that to make something a text element that can be displayed as a label, you will need to use quotation marks. And that's about it. I should say that this is just one way to set things up in Lima. It's an incredibly deep and powerful piece of software and its uses are nearly limitless. One last thing. Sometimes I find it faster to edit Lima files using a text editor. I'll quickly open up the Lima file in Notepad++ to show you. Here are the various containers of the instrument bank and each of these lines contains an expression with the instrument's name and articulations. You may find it faster to copy and paste articulation lists from one instrument to another here than inside the Lima editor for example. I tend to make a master articulation list per library and then adapt it per instrument which is faster than making a list per instrument every single time. Anyway, this has been a pretty complex video but hopefully it has given you some new ideas that you can now incorporate into your own setup. Below the video you'll find a link to my Lima project Feel free to download it and modify it to your own needs. Included in the Lima project are articulation lists for most of the libraries that I use. I'll leave the exact details below. This has been the penultimate video of the template video series. There is just one more upcoming video in which I will share a few more random tips and tricks for template building. And I'll also try and answer any questions that I've received thus far. So if you happen to have any specific questions about the things that I've covered in this series, and please send them along and I'll try to cover them in the last video. Also, soon I'll be starting a new series of videos in which I will talk about music production. I'll talk about my approach to reverbs, EQ and compression, share some tips for MIDI programming and getting the most out of your samples, and much more. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.